she's very uh, precocious. She walks right up to people. She looks for mom for security to make sure it's okay, but she's very outgoing. The filly we have is the most valuable that you can find on Earth right now. This is the first ever that has been successfully produced by artificial insemination. Przewalski or Szewalski, either pronunciation is considered correct. Um, they're native to Mongolia and China. They went extinct in the wild back in the 1900s and were brought into captivity. They were saved in zoos and the population was built back up again. If you're able to consistently produce offspring by artificial insemination, it is a lot easier for me or another researcher to travel to an institution that is holding a male, collect semen samples from those animals, transport it to the place where the female is situated, and produce an offspring that way. So it's, it gives a lot more flexibility in what we can accomplish. By developing this tool, what we hope to do is to really minimize the need for moving live animals for genetic management purposes. Moving live animals can be risky. It's very expensive. The first question that we get asked is, why is it so difficult? Why did it take seven years for you to accomplish something that's being done on a daily basis? The actual procedure of doing artificial insemination is exactly the same that we use in the domestic horses. But when you throw in the uncertain factors of how these animals respond to our handling, that's the price we pay to wait until we get it nailed to the point that we're able to get successful reproduction. Because these are not domestic horses, you're not going to see halters on them. I can't lead them around. They have to do it pretty much willingly or on a routine type of pattern. You can't walk up to these guys, you can't touch them, you can't make them do anything they really don't want to. It takes them a long time to trust you, but then once you do, I feel very privileged that I get to be a part of their group, their herd. She'll stay here at least for the first two years. She may go to another zoo. She most likely will not go to Mongolia because she was captive bred. We can't really teach her how to defend herself from a wolf or other predators out in the wild. We just don't have that ability here. If there is no failure, I think there's no fun in science. And the failures actually allow us to refine some of the techniques and also to understand how we can improve our tools that we're developing to get successes.